Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we will learn how we can host our website on AWS server for free. So actually uh, AWS, uh, is, AWS allows us to host uh, multiple websites for free for one year. We can host any number of websites on the AWS server for free and it will not charge, charge us any amount until uh, one year is get complete. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, we will search for AWS login. And if you don't have any account, you first you need to create an account on the Amazon AWS server, and then you need to add a payment method. But don't worry, you will not get charged. Login to your AWS console, and after login. From here, go to your AWS console. And go to EC2. You, if you don't find in the list, as you can see here, it's in the all services, compute and EC2. Click on it. Now, as you can see, we don't have any running instances. So we, can, we need to create an instance from here and you can create multiple instance to host multiple websites and after head click on the launch instance button and here you can choose any of the operating system and we will use ubuntu server 20.4 as you can see here we are eligible for free tier so click on select then you can choose any of the instance type so for free version we need to choose t2 micro so here the difference is here the number of cpu cores and the uh, memory means ram so in the free tier we will use one cpu and one gb of ram and it will give us 30 gb of storage space as an ssd 30 gb of ssd storage so and you can if you want to uh, extra space or memory power you can use any of these and it will be and you, but you will be get charged if you choose any of the other so we will use the free tier and to host any simple website to, uh, for testing or for for host to view on the live uh, we can use t2 micro and go to next configure instance details and don't we don't have to change anything here just go to add storage and here you can uh, use up to <coughs> 30 gb of storage from here and uh, but we will we don't have to increase it as it's 8 gb is quite sufficient for us so let's get as it is next go to add tags so if you want to add any tags uh, for just for your key pair assistant just but don't this is don't require just for two next configure security launches now we need to add security groups security groups allow us to access to disable the access of multiple wizards of our server like like tcps ssh smtps so first uh, so we need to add some more uh, security groups here as ssh is already added here we need to all, to add all tcp and it should be from anywhere all udps and it should be from anywhere source and uh, another one is smtp to access configure smtp on the server and now http and it should be from anywhere and https it should be any from anywhere and yeah that's quite sufficient for now let's remove it so we need to add these all now click on the review and launch review we have choose the t2 micro free tire click on the launch so here to access our server from the ssh connection we need to generate a key pair here so 
we'll click on the create new key pair and name it like we will name it as test one and you can use any of any name according to you and after naming it download the key pair here from here don't forget to download the key pair and otherwise you will not able to uh, log into your instance through SSH connection so after download click on the launch instance after that uh, click on the service and choose ec2 from here and now you can see uh, we have one running instance which we have created recently and you can check the state from here running okay so after that uh, we also need to add an ip to our instance so we can add we can access uh, our server through an ip to do that go to elastic ips scroll and go to elastic ips and allocate click on allocate elastic ip address and don't change anything from here and click on allocate okay we have created a new elastic ip and now we need to associate this ip with our instance so uh, select this and click on associate this elastic ip address okay and we don't have which need to choose an instance uh, if we have multiple instance uh, we will get all the running instance here so we currently we only have uh, one instance running so choose it and click on associate okay so now we have associated our ip and as you can see here our ip address is now click on the refresh okay so our ipv4 has been changed and elastic ip is now 3 dot and we can access our server through this ip address so now after that we need to connect with our server through ssh connection okay if you are on a windows machine you need to install putty and go to search putty and go to download putty and download and download any of the msi installer 32 bit or 64 bit according to your system requirement and if you are on a linux system or <laughs> ubuntu system you don't have to install putty you can directly connect with the pam file using this command so first of all you need to change the permission of the key file for only ubuntu users and then you can use the following command to connect to the server so the command is sudo ssh i path to your key file where you have uh, placed the key file and then change it with the our ip address which is this everyone will get a different ip yeah so to connect to ssh on the ubuntu, ubuntu machine you need to run following command okay so after that uh, we need to run few commands uh, so let's connect first of we will we need to connect our server so for windows users uh, what we need to do is search after installing putty search for putty generator and we need to generate a private key pair and after opening click on load and select the file pam file here open okay and now we need to create an now click on save private key and click on yes and save it as um, test one okay and click on save okay so now we have created a ppk file uh, so to install to connect to, with the ssh from windows machine we need to create a ppk file from the pam file so after creating this open putty okay now we need to 
pass a host name which is our IP address and uh, click on data and auto login username and by default the username is Ubuntu for all Linux and Windows users we need to use the username Ubuntu and after that click on SSH after this on, click on auth and we need to add the authentication file which we have just created use this file and open okay now click on open and if you connect with the first time it will ask you the, to add in the cache click on yes and yeah now we are connected to our server through SSH so this step is uh, all same for Windows and from now all these steps are same for Windows and Linux users so as you can see we have used 16.8% which is the memory acquired by the server from 8 GB and system load is 0 currently processing is 99 IPv4 is this 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 and the Ubuntu version is 20.0.4.1 so now we need to run these following commands and I will provide these commands in the description I will add these steps in the description so you can copy and paste it so first of all we need to run this command sudo apt-cat update so it will install all the updates available for our Ubuntu server after that we need to install Apache 2 so run the following command So do I pick it and install Apache 2. <laughs> Click on the shift Y. Okay, so Apache has been installed and you can check it by running let's copy it and hit this url and as you can see apache 2 went to default page as our apache 2 is installed after that we need to install mysql server Yes. Okay, it will take some time okay so now it's has been installed or mysql server is installed after that uh, we need to run the following command sudo mysql underscore secure installation okay so now it will ask us to add a password for your youtube users so you can uh, choose any password according to you and let's add a password here for our youtube users root user for my skill so okay sorry 
first of all it will ask it is asking us to validate our password so choose uh, no here we don't want to validate our password now add a password for our user confirm the password okay so password has not match after that remove anonymous users choose yes disallow remote login remotely choose no remote test to database and access to it yes reload privileges yes after that we need to check if our mysql is installed or not so run the following command uh, to check if mysql is installed or not sudo mysql hyphen u and root hyphen p if every uh, now we need to give it to it a password which we have just added so it will be Okay, as you can see, we are in currently now we are in MySQL, and it means uh, we have successfully installed MySQL server. So now exit. Bye. After that, we need to install some of the PHP libraries. So just copy it and paste it here and install. Choose yes. Okay, now our PHP is installed. Now we need to restart our Apache server. Type sudo service Apache 2 restart. Okay, now our server has been restarted. After that, we need to install PHP MyAdmin so we can access our MySQL databases so install sudo if it install php my admin choose yes okay so now we need to configure our php my admin so uh, to choose choose the apache 2 and click on the space bar so to select and after that click on tab and then press enter okay click on ds yes, don't change it yeah and click on the enter okay now it is asking us for a password for our php my admin you can use any of the password or you can use the previous one which we just added on the mysql so i am using the same password for now after typing password click on the tab to go to ok and click on enter now pass confirm the password Let's tab okay after that okay 
okay so our php my admin has been configured um, let's check it first to go to php my admin uh, click copy the url and paste it here and after that type php my admin to access php my admin as you can see we are now able to access php my admin so by default php my admin has a username of same php my admin and password is is same which we have added while configuring php my admin and you can see now we are able to access our php my admin but uh, this is this user is created by php my admin but uh, we also want to want to access our php my admin with the root with the root user which uh, is which we have created while installing mysql server so we also need to configure that and uh, this step is optional and this is not required so basically what we need to do is and uh, we need to give our root user to access the php my admin so copy this command to access mysql okay now we need to add a password of mysql server okay, now we need to run this command alter table user root at the localhost identified by native password and this copy this command and change the password <laughs> with your php my admin password or you can use any of the different password so i am changing it to continue and after that press enter if everything is successful you will see query okay zero was affected and after that we need to flush all the privileges okay now we can exit from here and now let's uh, check in an incognito window if we are able to log in through our root user or not so let's type here the root and password is as you can see we are now able to access php my admin and also our php has been installed you can check the version of php from here php hyphen v and you can see php 7.4.3 okay so in the next video we will learn how we can connect our server uh, with the filezilla to access all the files and to upload and delete the files thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe